Shotwell keeps the jacks and the rubber ball in his attaché case and will not allow me to play with them. He plays with them, alone, sitting on the floor near the console, hour after hour, chanting onesies, twosies, threesies, foursies, in a precise, well-modulated voice, not so loud as to be annoying, not so soft as to allow me to forget. They're mine, he says. I am aching to get my hands on them. Shotwell and I watch the console. Shotwell and I live under the ground and watch the console. If certain events take place upon the console, we are to insert our keys in the appropriate locks and turn our keys. Shotwell has a key, and I have a key. If we turn our keys simultaneously, the bird flies. Certain switches are activated, and the bird flies. But the bird never flies. In 133 days, the bird has not flown. Meanwhile, Shotwell and I watch each other. We each wear a forty-five, and if Shotwell behaves strangely, I am supposed to shoot him. If I behave strangely, Shotwell is supposed to shoot me. We watch the console and think about shooting each other and think about the bird. Each of us wears a forty-five, and each of us is supposed to shoot the other if the other is behaving strangely. How strangely is strangely? I do not know. In addition to the forty-five, I have a thirty-eight which Shotwell does not know about concealed in my attaché case. And Shotwell has a twenty-five caliber Beretta which I do not know about strapped to his right calf. Sometimes, instead of watching the console, I pointedly watch Shotwell's forty-five. But this is simply a ruse, simply a maneuver. In reality, I am watching his hand when it dangles in the vicinity of his right calf. If he decides I am behaving strangely, he will shoot me not with the forty-five, but with the Beretta. Similarly, Shotwell pretends to watch my forty-five, but he is really watching my hand resting idly atop my attaché case. My hand resting idly atop my attaché case. My hand, my hand resting idly atop my attaché case. Shotwell is enrolled in a USAFI course, which leads to a master's degree in business administration from the University of Wisconsin. Although we are not in Wisconsin, we are in Utah, Montana. Or Idaho. When we went down, it was in either Utah, Montana, or Idaho. I don't remember. We have been here for 133 days, owing to an oversight. I am not well. We have been here 133 days, owing to an oversight. Although now we are not sure what is oversight, what is plan. Perhaps the plan is for us to stay here permanently, or if not permanently, at least for a year, for 365 days. Or if not for a year, for some number of days known to them and not known to us, or perhaps they are observing our behavior in some way. Perhaps our behavior determines the number of days. I do not know, but I suspect that the only way they can persuade sun-loving creatures into their pale green, sweating, reinforced concrete rooms under the ground is to say that the system is twelve hours on, twelve hours off, and then lock us below for some number of days known to them and not known to us. When Shotwell sleeps, I try to pick the lock on his attaché case so as to get at the jacks. Thus far, I have been unsuccessful. Nor has Shotwell been successful in picking the locks on my attaché case so as to get at the thirty-eight. I have seen the marks on the shiny surface. I write descriptions of natural forms on the walls, scratching them on the tile surface with a diamond. I have described a shell, a leaf, a stone, animals. A baseball bat. I am aware that the baseball bat is not a natural form. Yet I described it. The baseball bat, I said, is typically made of wood. It is typically one meter in length or a little longer, fat at one end, tapering to afford a comfortable grip at the other. The end with the handhold typically offers a slight rim or lip at the nether extremity to prevent slippage. My description of the baseball bat ran to forty-five hundred words, all scratched with a diamond on the south wall. Does Shotwell read what I have written? I do not know. I am aware that Shotwell regards my writing behavior as a little strange. Yet it is no stranger than his Jack's behavior, or the day he appeared in black bathing trunks with the twenty-five caliber Beretta strapped to his right calf and stood over the console, trying to span with his two arms outstretched the distance between the locks. He could not do it. 
I had already tried, standing over the console with my two arms outstretched. The distance is too great. They had, in their infinite patience, in their infinite foresight, in their infinite wisdom, already imagined a man standing over the console with his two arms outstretched, trying to span with his two arms outstretched the distance between the locks. Shotwell has something in mind. Something to do with the keys, with the locks. But there must be a quid pro quo. I insist on a quid pro quo. I have something in mind. I am not well. I do not know our target. They do not tell us for which city the bird is targeted. I do not know. That is planning. That is not my responsibility. My responsibility is to watch the console, and when certain events take place upon the console, turn my key in the lock. I am aching to get my hands on the ball, on the jacks. We have been here 133 days owing to an oversight. I write on the walls. Shotwell chants, onesies, twosies, threesies, foursies, in a precise, well-modulated voice. Now he cups the jacks and the rubber ball in his hands and rattles them suggestively. I understand what it is Shotwell wishes me to do. At such moments, we are very close. But only if he will give me the jacks. That is fair. There is something he wants me to do with my key. Well, he does something with his key but only if he will give me my turn. That is fair. I am not well. <laughs>